new hair. So if I haven't been pretty obvious before, I'm quite a bit of a geek or a nerd. I'm not really pissed about the distinction. And there's been three examples recently of sexism or misogyny in geek culture, which is what we're going to talk about this week. The first example, and the one which most people have probably heard about, is Feminist Frequency's harassment for having the audacity to suggest that she would like to make a video series about sexist tropes of women in video games. The second example is the science, it's a girl thing video, which is, yeah, apparently science is a girl thing because it's about makeup and clothes and dancing around. And the third one is a geek culture versus pop culture image, which has been doing the rounds a lot recently. I'm not going to talk about the first two, in the first case because I'm not much of a gamer myself and because most of what I'd have to say would just repeat what I already said in my online harassment trolls video that we did a few months ago, which you will find in the description. And in the second case, because I think my thoughts can quite adequately be summed up in these two images. So let's talk about that geek culture versus pop culture image. So presumably, whoever made this image, the intention was to celebrate amazing female role models in geek culture. And uh, yeah, great, let's do that. The examples given are pretty good examples of good female role models in geek culture, and there are others that could easily have been given as well. Women who kick all kinds of ass, who are determined, resourceful, good leaders, who are scientists, engineers, computer hackers, and just generally as intelligent as hell. I love these characters. I grew up with these characters. I grew up watching Buffy and Star Trek and Stargate and Doctor Who. I mean, when we did our week on female role models, my video was about two fictional characters, Willa Rosenberg and Buffy Summers. But let's not pretend that geek culture gets a free pass on sexism. You don't get any cookies for treating women as capable human beings because the other people aren't. Especially not when they're so frequently doing so whilst providing a woman's primary role in media as sexual titillation for all the male viewers wank bank. There's a reason that Seven of Nine uh, an ex-Borg rediscovering her humanity was dressed in heels, a skin-tight catsuit, and inexplicably perfect hair and makeup. There's a reason that Princess Leia was written into that slave girl gold bikini that everyone loves so much. And there's a reason that Lara Croft is being given an attempted rape backstory to make her seem vulnerable and to make male players want to protect her. I don't see anyone making us want to protect male protagonists in video games. The image cherry picks examples of strong female role models from geek sci-fi culture, where it could have quite as easily picked scantily clad, sexually promiscuous women, just like those in the pop culture row, from exactly the same shows, let alone within the wider geek culture community. And that is why the women in the top row are being presented as so supposedly bad or not as good female role models, isn't it? Because they are generally quite scantily clad and posed in sexually promiscuous positions. Because they're not acting like quiet, sensible, demure ladies, nor are they fighting bad guys or knuckling down to some quantum physics like the women in the second row. And don't get me wrong, I love me some badass lady scientists, and we definitely need more represented in mainstream media, but not at the expense of shaming other women who have chosen a different path. Because seriously, fuck that elitist judgmental bullshit. Yes, we sadly live in a world that fails to promote science and technology and general capability to women as a possibility. And yes, this needs to be recognised and we need more role models like the ones shown in the geek culture row. But we also need to address the ways in which women are objectified as sexual decoration and the ways in which women are then shamed for owning their sexuality and using it and expressing it as their own form of power. And the ways images like this subtly contribute to our victim-blaming rape culture where how a woman was dressed, her past sexual history, whether she was under the influence of any substances, and how hard she fought to get away are considered mitigating factors in whether or not she was sexually assaulted. Or if it can be argued that she brought it upon herself. Why can't we celebrate positive female role models in geek culture and pop culture and whatever other culture without having to belittle and denigrate other women who don't meet the same standards? And as geeks, are we really so insecure about our supposed role models that we have to point to other actual women 
in comparison to fictional characters and say, look, look at those real women. Look how much worse they are than the ones that we made up. Because that's the final point that really needs to be made. All of the women in the bottom row are fictional. They all had their lives created for them, probably by male writers. Whereas four out of the five women in the top row are actual people. Women who've grown up in a world of sexualized imagery and objectification, who may have internalized the sexism that's been all around them for their entire lives, or decided to fuck it and use it to their own advantage. There's a link in the description, along with a whole bunch of others, as usual, because you know how I love my links, to a blog post by a friend of mine which basically says all of this far better than I have been able to. So I'm just going to finish by kind of paraphrasing her final point. Yes, role model is a value judgement, and yes, some of the people who we currently present as female role models could possibly give us pause for thought about the values we choose to promote. But the same could just as equally be said of geek culture.